Well, there was a little poster put on the window in our class. The uh, community group in our class wanted someone to come and build a boat. And I love boats. And my friend Ricky, he loves boats. He's a professional boat builder, wooden boat builder. And we just decided we go to the meeting. And having three sons at around 20 years of age, uh, we're all into boats and they're our NLI lifeguards. So. We thought we'd go around and see what was involved, and we were very pleased that there was a boat coming to us from the Stratford Rock Lakeale Partnership. Well, I'd been following the skiffs for some years. Uh, I have been to the Scottish Traditional Boat Festival, and they were appearing there, and each time I went there were more of them, so that the last time I went there were 12. I first got involved with the project um, word of mouth, just um, chat in the village amongst people and um, it just sounded terribly interesting. I brought my children along and we all became members. One of our guys had built a canoe many many years ago, him and his wife, and a number of us had um, some joinery skills, not boat building skills, um, but joinery skills, basic. Before we received our kit we had uh, an insight into what was needed for a frame, uh, so the timber was bought and assembled properly levelled and squared, very important to get all that there right because from that there is what's going to give you your finished product so accuracy is very important at that stage. Robert had built a, a rowing boat probably probably 40 years ago or so, it was a long long time ago and um, well, he's an engineer by background and would be very much up for a challenge so he was happy enough to, to uh, take on the, the technical aspects of it. Well, the first thing we did when we received the kit was to um, inspect it, make sure everything was okay. Um, we'd got plans, so we checked off against the plans and marked everything. We put sticky tape, uh, masking tape on all the pieces and um, wrote their part numbers on so we could, <laughs> we could make sure that we fit, hopefully fit them together. Most of the panels are, 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 are pre-stamped or pre-machined out in the various sheets and there's, um, they just basically need some trimming tidying and cleaning and then the scarf joints need to be cut for the, for, the, for the joints to make them into the full length planks. Put the frames in and then after that we, uh, we scarfed the hog which, is, which goes right along the, the keel, the bottom keel band of the boat and uh, we proceeded from there. If I could build this boat with basic DIY skills uh, most people could build a boat. I mean, my main things were I went around dollar bills, asked questions on how did they do this and what do you call this, you know, and, and uh, you know, and they, they were telling me, you know, it's a dory lap and this and, and other things. And I brought back basically from asking questions and put it into practice here and, and done it, no problem. The next vital stage was to laminate the stem and the stern. Um, posts of the boat. Now that was a challenge because the, the wood that we got was oversized. Now with hindsight we should have had it planed down quite su substantially into, into thinner strips um, so that we, we bent, when we bend the, uh, the strips into the shape and glue together that they stay where they should. Well ours didn't so we, we had a, a couple of goes at some of them um, and, but eventually got, got them okay. Well, I think one of the most challenging bits was uh, doing the, the scarfing joints and I think it would be fair to say that there's no two joints uh, the same on that boat. It has uh, is six planks each side, full length, um, which are made up out of three, uh, three, three separate planks um, which are joined together to make, the, to make the six. So it's 12 in total, but there's 18 components that need to be accurately fitted together and then obviously they have to be bent around the, the framework um, and set up and once, once you're happy with the final joints um, then they're taken away, the glue's mixed and um, then they're finally fixed and clamped in place. It's down to there, is it? Can't bring yeah. more of it. Okay. So we ended up then with a, a bare boat which was the, uh, the hull with the, the planks and then the, we mounted the keel 
and um, we turned it over. Any girls? Girls want some girls? Yeah. Walk her over. Walk her over. Just keep walking back slowly. Let her down. Let her down. Let her down. I was very surprised when we turned the boat. Um, I was actually very surprised when we turned it how, how light it was. It, um, it was a great evening, everyone turned up and we, we turned the boat and it was, it was, it was beautiful. I mean, it would sort of, the, our view of her completely changed and, and was literally turned and uh, it just made you inspired to keep going. <laughs> Your end down. Oh, that sounds a bit right. Start working round. The boat was turned, and when she was turned, uh, all the boat builders and the teams and rowers. Uh, Everyone was delighted that something had been achieved in the village, which I, which I think is the real meaning behind the whole concept from the Strength of Lockley Kiel partnership. They have a concept and this is part of it where it will bring communities together, make people feel as though they have a sense of belonging. We're basically involved because it brings the whole community together. And as you saw earlier, there's children and people of all ages involved and we're in Kirkcoven tonight, but it's also taking place in other villages around the peninsula and across the water, the far side in Strangford. We thought when we got to the turning over stage that uh, we were nearly there, but no, I don't think you're really even halfway when you get to the stage. In our particular case, we probably complicated things because we decided that we, instead of doing a normal gong, we did what they call a scuppered gong. And this uh, involved quite a lot of uh, labour in making the, the rounded bits for the gong. Also, we, uh, we decided to make a, a bow shape stem head and stern piece, uh, the stern piece being the backrest for the, the coxswain seat. Now, this involved uh, steaming bits of timber. When I say steaming, I actually mean rolling them, getting slats of timber uh, and boiling water, surrounding with old tiles, and then bending them round the uh, the former that we had made and doing that bit by bit by bit each and we weren't able to do it all at the one time. So this is the oars and this is going to make up the blades. And these go on either side here to make up and then these will be shaped in to make the shape off the oar. The process that we used for, for, for making the oars is we, we set up a bench with the uh, L brackets on either end, and we put a metal plate on either end of the timber and connected it up to a hand drill and actually planed down the excess timber and then used the drill to spin the timber and use sandpaper to smooth it off. The actual fittings uh, for the rudder were, uh, made, were quite complicated and we were very lucky we were approached by a man called Eddie Gilmour from uh, Bally Walter, who has a stainless steel engineering works and did all sorts. And he was very, very good. And he came along with, um, without uh, any questioning. He just produced these wonderful brackets and we were delighted that he did that. A lot of the uh, group uh, hadn't had uh, any experience of um, uh, working with epoxy and I had uh, very limited experience myself but um, uh, once we uh, uh, done the first joint uh, and uh, I think that was the, uh, the, s the stern and stem posts um, uh, it quite uh, quickly became clear that um, epoxy was not something to, uh, to be worried about. The finished length is 22 feet in old money um, and it has to be, I believe it's 150 kilograms, it has to be in excess of 150 kilograms. Uh, so the closer you can get to that there, the, the better your chances are 
uh, in, the, in the racing of these, these vessels. I think the biggest obstacle we came across on the, build, on the, on the very early planks, the, the garboard strike, which is the first board that goes on, uh, between the first frame and the, and the stem, it was difficult to get this, um, this pulled into the, into the shape on the frame. So we actually set in uh, further, further mouldings to give us something to, to clamp to. Um, but other than that there, everything went fairly, fa fairly well. It was actually Alan Moffat of, of the, the help with our build to come out with a What About Ram Harry? And Ram Harry is the name of the Ram races just out past the Lighthouse Island and Ram Harry Rock, you know, the, obviously the water runs past it, gives you the, the Ram races. And obviously with our boat being for racing, Ram racing, Ram Harry, you know, so it's, that's just stuck. Best shed in the, in the village really was the building that we're in at the minute. And that belonged to Danny uh, Flynn at one point in time. And we thought it'd be nice to be able to reflect the, the, um, the goodwill, if you like, that we received from uh, the Flynn family. And because uh, Henry Flynn, who now owns the premises, was Danny's son, we, uh, Robert Graham came up with the notion that Danny Boy would be a good way of reflecting the heritage of the yard and the goodwill that we received from, uh, from Henry. To choose the name, we had to think of it. A number of suggestions were made. We were conscious that we wanted the community to be involved. So what we did was we took a, sh a short list of names to the local primary school. Uh, and this was after some of the kids had been brought up to the boat building shed uh, to see the boat. Now they went back to the school, they told the other kids about it. There was then an election and all 42 children in the school voted. And by a big margin, they chose the name Strangafjorthor, which is derived from the Old Norse or Viking. Um, and it was quite remarkable because all the other names were much more straightforward, but they chose, chose this one. The Black Neb is a rocky promontory, which is uh, between Doctors Bay and the Grancha Point. Uh, and the Black Neb was given its name by the smugglers of Strangford Loch. Whenever they were smuggling contraband up the loch at night, they always looked out for this Black Neb, which marked the entrance to, into Doctors Bay where they landed their contraband. So it has been always known as the Black Neb, and uh, thought that the name Black Neb, Black Boat and Black Neb, the Black Nose, and then we thought a Black Nose, a cunning fox, would be a good name for it, so it was called the Black Neb Vixen, the Black Nose Fox. The name Gilpin um, is, is a very local name, it's very pertinent to Port Ferry in that uh, Port Ferry was a fishing, big, big fishing village, and uh, at one stage the Gilpin was a fish that was caught um, in abundance and it became associated with Port Ferry. And after a while, the people who were born in Port Ferry on the um, Shore Road uh, were known as Gilpins. So we thought it was very special to, to name it Gilpin as it is a Port Ferry name. When we were growing up, in and out of boats around the loch, we talked about the birds and you, what's this bird, what's that bird? And we, we saw the herons and all that. And we, co we called all different names from other places. Now, a heron to us was a cranny. Now, it's, it's a heron, but a cranny we called it, but the other one was a cormorant. Our name was Skart. Now, we were always told as children that the Skart was the Scandinavian or the Viking name for it, with Strangford Loch being um, famous for the Vikings being there um, in the eight, 800s or wherever it was, when they were pillaging and doing all the things they do, or did, um, that that name has come down from us, down to us from, from those times. That, so the, we thought, well, that would be appropriate. The colours are Donegal colours, uh, rugby club, hockey club, all carry red and green uh, and that's how it just basically we just kept the traditional as Donegal colours. The boat was varnished um, and it has uh, made it look very well. You tend to suggest you're going to varnish a boat if you believe the boat's been well made and ours has been very well made and uh, the varnish is beautiful. If you're out in the loch looking at the boat and there's a low sun in the sky reflecting off the hull it looks drop dead gorgeous
When we were having one of our team meetings, one of the things we were asked to decide on, because all the team, all the various villages were deciding, was the, the colours of the, of, the, of, the, of the skiff. So we had a, we, our main criterion was visibility. In the very unlikely uh, event that she would turn over, we wanted to make sure she could, she could be seen. So it was either bright red or bright yellow. We chose red. So the launch day was brilliant. The sun was shining. There were lots of people uh, turned up. There was music, uh, there was food. The boat was launched. A number of people uh, got the opportunity to go out in the boat. Um, and there was one fairly dramatic moment coming back in uh, with the sun shining whenever Pirates of the Caribbean was playing and I don't think I'll ever forget that. Today we've had the launch of it and done our first sea trials which we're I'd say we're pleased with. <laughs> My dad's a wooden boat builder by trade, so I'm a big influence in the building of the boat. I think people should get involved in rowing the boat. It's good sport and keeps everybody together as a community. It's just a bit of crack to be had on a daily basis. It's a bit of fun. The boat going into the water is just the icing on the cake and the, the finish of 10 weeks of hard, um, intensive work. <laughs> the day has been a proud, proud day for our village. Uh, really, really proud. An emotional day for the boat builders because it's something that they've loved from, from day one um, right up till times to come. This has gone down in history and we would encourage any youth to get involved in this wonderful project, wonderful project it is. I felt, when the boat hit the water for the first time, nervous, uh, not knowing whether we were going to spring a leak. And we did. There was one little pinhole, so there was, which was quickly rectified. And uh, we went on ahead with the launch and uh, got out for some photographs and stuff to get there. It was, a, it was actually a, a really good day. The day it was launched, we had a fantastic turnout from the local community. We had hundreds of people here and we were lucky enough to uh, get three members of uh, the Ulster rugby team to come down. It's something a wee bit different. Um, it's nice we sort of do quite a lot of PR events that are very similar to, to each other but it's nice to get out to somewhere different um, and uh, reach out to the different parts of the community. Um, I know a lot of good work's going on here to get to get a few of these boats made and um, they're trying to bring more and more of that in around uh, Stranker Lock. Well, I think it's, it's, it's very important because it, not only does it bring the community together, it, uh, it enables people to learn about the heritage and what went before and what has come, hopefully come after. We took her for a walk around Killie and um, people with buckets and went and collected money from passers-by. That's us, about 200 miles an hour. One stroke this side, one stroke this side. Everybody who was out today really, really enjoyed it. Anyone I was speaking to um, said they had a, a, a brilliant time. So that's what it's all about. It's about bringing the community together and hopefully this will continue. There's been a number of new friendships uh, formed through the project. Yes, it's... Um, it was it was it was actually interesting to see at the meeting, one of the meetings last week. You know, the question was asked of uh, Robert Graham and Stephen Armstrong whether they'd met one another before the project, and uh, and they hadn't really. You know, um, and 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 as a result of the project, they're out actually quite regularly rowing together and uh, going on holiday together. Our class contacted us. Um, I suppose they heard that we were falling behind or we're having difficulties with the build and um, so William gave us a shout on the phone and was just offering his support to see if there's any way they could help us. We all agreed that maybe it was best that we brought it down in our glass there was more space we had guys there who had the skills and knowledge and they were being very supportive so we thought it was just going to be best all around to, to help get the, the boat finished.
to not only get the guys mixing with other people in their local community, but get them mixing with other, other people from another community. So that was a really positive aspect that came out of it. Yes, having the boat builder and the team has meant that we've learned a lot of, uh, about boat building. Uh, not least the amount of commitment that's required and the attention to detail. Right. Yeah. I've learnt a fair number of skills uh, throughout the build. With them, um, there's a lot of expert advice um, from from the men and the boys involved. Just uh, from the knowledge is amazing, and we're very hands-on. They let us uh, participate, uh, not just watching and teaching us, but actually making us do the things. And so I now know what the tools are for. And. Uh, uh, safety procedures, everything they were. I mean, it was fantastic learning uh, for, for myself and the children. Really, really inspirational. The skills were, were passed from person to person, so we, 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 we learned with each other in some cases, and then in other cases, the guys um, said, Look, this is the best way to do it, and showed it. Stopping it turn now. It brings them together, the people together, to row, brings them together to the harbour. Get them out of the house a nice sunny day, something to watch the boats rowing around the harbour and hopefully we'll have the other eight here for a couple of occasions this year. Every Sunday you go out and you just, people go out with a grin on their face and they come in with a grin on their face. They're all having a great time. She's amazing to row. She's, she's absolutely fantastic. The, the oars are amazing. It was a great design and they, they rowed smoothly. We've rowed uh, all, you know, we've all rowed girls teams, boys teams, mixed teams, young and old, mixed together, and everybody has a favourite side, everybody has a favourite oar, but actually she's just a beautiful boat. Very proud of her. Going forward in the future, we would see um, very much, there's, there's, a, there's a, a, a very growing interest in, in, in rowing opportunities, and it's, and it's from people of all ages, all levels of ability, uh, very much uh, surprising. There's, there's men and women of all ages, um, people who have retired. Other teams have come and joined us, um, not every Sunday, but from time to time they have, and that's been good. Uh, the rest of the time we go out for practice rows, and some people are in the boat, others are waiting ashore for their turn, and they're chatting away, so it's a great atmosphere. There was the Narrows Challenge, which was a major get-together. There has been a race in Dundrum, uh, where five boats turned up, and there was a, uh, that was a great day with a really good atmosphere. We have had occasions when other boats have turned up to row from Portaferry, from Dundrum, from uh, Killalay. Um, so there have been occasions uh, when people get together, and indeed on one occasion, I was told a couple of days later by one of the local businessmen that this had the effect of producing a turn up in business for all the businesses in the village, so it has quite a wide ranging impact. A lot of people were involved throughout the community from the procuring the premises uh, to the, the building, the, the painting, uh, the rudder fittings, an awful lot of people were involved, so it just wasn't um, a one man project and say we were delighted to have so many people involved in helping us to build this boat. There were some people we'd never met before and um, have become firm friends. I would just like to encourage us more um, and hopefully, hope, fingers crossed, that we can get more boats into the water. Now the maritime heritage of these boats is very interesting. Uh, the boat, the design of the boat is based on that of the Fair Isle skiff up in the Northern Isles of Scotland and it in turn was based on Viking influences. And indeed, uh, earlier on this afternoon, a man came along and, and he asked me, was this a Viking boat? Hello and welcome. You're watching UTV Live at 6. Now, we've previously brought you the story of how communities along the County Down coast have spent months building specialist boats. Well, they finally got to test the waters as the skiffs were raced around Castle Ward Bay. The Narrows Challenge was a brilliant day. I, I must admit, I really enjoyed it. Now, I, I wasn't rowing, uh, I was down the safety boat down, but it brought so many people together. There was a really good crowd watching, and it was a brilliant day. 
It was good fun. The Narrows challenges were uh, superb. It was a tremendous atmosphere. There were lots of people. The boats, not just the boats that were rowing, but all the boats with film crews in them, the safety boats. And uh, there, were, there was a really big atmosphere around the place. Um, we didn't do too badly. Uh, we managed to do even better when we got to Dundrum to sort of lay that ghost to rest. Um, so it was, it was a superb day and it was superbly organised. The atmosphere was tremendous. Narrow's challenge was, was an incredible day. We, it started on Portaferry side. We all climbed into um, the St Brendan and we went over and it was fantastic. The police were with us as, and, and it was a massive crowd going over with all our rowing kit and we went to the other side for the day and um, had a great time. Rowing was amazing. It was, um, I didn't actually take part in the, the challenge, but we did the sprints and it was, it was fantastic. Our big focus, of course, was to get her into the water for the Narrows Challenge on the 5th of um, October. So we got her in just two or three weeks beforehand and managed to get a couple of practices in. Our guys were very, very keen um, and we were lucky enough to win the, 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 the main race on the, on the day. Well, about two years ago, working with the Police Service of Northern Ireland, some of our community officers, we began to realise the huge potential that there was for coastal rowing to take off in this area. We saw it happen in Scotland, we knew we could do it here, but today is the day when we finally see the boats in the water. started and her coven started strong uh, but we stayed with them and overtook her coven after a few hundred yards but then Strangford started to come through on the outside and Strangford were with us the whole way towards the end. The end was started to slightly get in front of Strangford and everybody was getting tired and we were lucky just to hold it to the end. So this has been a fabulous initiative uh, which was all started by one of our neighbourhood officers in Port of Ferry Station, Constable Nick Jenkins, working with Strangford Lock and Lacal Partnership and bringing together nine different towns who had a legacy and a culture of boat building and then of course bringing these communities together who wouldn't normally work together. Bringing them together, working together for a bit of fun for a day like this, but also younger people and older people working together in those communities. All of which leads to a safer, more peaceful and very much a confident community right across this area. It was fantastic, really good. We had a, we had a rocky start and then we managed to pull off two wins, so we are pretty, pretty happy with ourselves. And I think the whole team's chuffed, so. 
we know that this is going to take off. It's as if we've just hit something that's gone off like wildfire. And we know that there's people already from Cork, from Scotland, from all over the world who are interested in coming here and meeting us. And why wouldn't they? Strangford Lock is such a fabulous place. So could we present this to Killilee? And very well done. <laughs>